If you've played a PlayStation console after July 2nd, 2008, you've probably heard this sound before. That's a trophy. Getting all the trophies for one game gets you a platinum trophy. Most of the time, the ultimate accolade that screams, I chose playing this game over going outside. I've seen a lot of platinum run videos recently, and I thought I'd do one about one half of the greatest video game rivalry of all time. I'll be honest, I've never really enjoyed Sonic games. I've finished Colors, and I've played a lot of Unleashed and Heroes, but the games never really clicked for me. So I thought I'd try the game that celebrates Sonic's legacy, Sonic Generations. At least in 2011, Generations is one of the most well-received games the franchise has ever produced, bringing the gameplay of modern and classic Sonic games together for one big adventure. A quick disclaimer before the video begins, I am not good at Sonic games. So, for series veterans, my gameplay here is going to be about as frustrating as watching Joe Biden climb a flight of stairs. I'm splitting this platinum run into five stages. One, the story. Two, actually getting good at the game. Three, online chicanery. Four, collectibles. And five, completing the challenge acts. We start off the first stage of the run with the trophy, the opening act, which we get for beating the first level of the game. And because I'm a certified gamer, I got my first S rank, getting me the trophy Bright Star. The game is divided into nine worlds representing previous Sonic titles, with each world being split into two acts, one classic and one modern. We get the trophy Green Hill Restored for beating both Green Hill acts and bringing colour back to the stage. And after beating both Chemical Plant zones, we get Chemical Plant Restored, along with the Shooting Star trophy for getting four S ranks. Four for four! Maybe I don't need stage two. While going through the absolute hellscape of Sky Sanctuary, I mean, no wonder Knuckles is on his own up there, it fucking sucks. I got the Eradicator trophy for killing 100 enemies. And after finishing Act 2, I got Sky Sanctuary restored. After beating the first three worlds, we're introduced to the Challenge Act, but I'll talk about them more in Stage 3. <laughs> but to unlock the boss, we need to beat 5 Challenge Acts to get 5 boss keys. And while doing this, I encountered the first rival fight of the game, Metal Sonic. Fuck Metal Sonic, I'm all about that Sonic Metal if you get me. After peacefully resolving our dispute with Metal Sonic, we get the trophy Scrap Metal. On the way to the first boss fight, the two Sonics finally meet and recreate a scene from Garfield 2, before we're faced with the Death Egg Robot. And for beating the boss fight, totally on the first try, we get the Sunny Side Up trophy. On to the next set of stages where we can finally experience Sonic's true potential on the PlayStation 3. Michael, don't leave me here. My After beating both acts, we get Speed Highway restored. I got Blazing Meteor for getting my 7th S rank while playing City Escape, and I finally understand why people love this song so much. And while committing acts of domestic terrorism, we get the trophy Demolition Derby. Derby? Derby? That. For destroying 30 cars. And after finishing both acts, we get City Escape restored. During Seaside Hill Act 2, we finish off Sonic's moveset of wall jumps, stomps, lightspeed air dashes, slides and drifts, earning the Action Hero Trophy. Followed shortly by Seaside Hill restored for, well, you know. And now it's time for more rival shenanigans with Shadow. Oh, they did the thing! They did the thing! For beating Shadow, we get the Shadow Boxing Trophy. And after getting the boss keys, we face Perfect Chaos and earn Perfect Punisher for winning. And now we're onto the stages based on the most recent games at the time of Generations release. To start off, we have Crisis City, which is based on. No, 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 no! Wait, 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 wait! Hey! Wait, 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 wait! Moving on. During Rooftop Run, I'm able to pull off more than six tricks in a row, getting the Trickstar Trophy. Wait, Trickster? After finishing the acts for Unleashed and Colors, we get Rooftop Run Restored and Planet Wisp Restored, respectively. Onto the final rival and boss fights of the game, first up is Silver from Mario and Sonic at the Winter Olympics. And after beating him, 
we get Silver Got Served. Moving on to the final boss before the end of the game, we get Boom Boom Dragon for defeating the Egg Dragon. And after getting a Chaos Emerald from each boss and rival fight, we get the Trophy Treasure Hunter. At the end of the story, we face off against Modern and Classic Eggman teaming up to use the Time Eater, and it goes about as well as you'd expect. After some encouragement from Sonic's friends, you got this, Sonic. Holy shit, is that you, Juro? We use the Chaos Emeralds to become Super Sonic and restore the timeline back to normal. Before leaving, the Sonics say goodbye, and Modern Sonic says, Hey Sonic, enjoy your future, it's gonna be great! If only you knew what your future held. For beating the story of the game, we get all stages cleared. With the story over and done with, we only have about half of the game's trophies, so it's time to start stage 2. First thing to do in stage 2 is to go back through the game and get an S rank on all the stages we missed. And while playing Sky Sanctuary, I got the trophy Walk on Air for beating Act 1 without falling or losing a life. To get an S rank, you need to complete an act in a good amount of time without dying once. As soon as you die, you're locked to an A rank at best. And at this point in the run, I was starting to play worse. I was making stupid mistakes and getting sloppy. After a while, I just needed some dopamine. So I just went and talked to all of Sonic's friends as both modern and classic Sonic for the trophy walkie talkie. Getting 12 S ranks gets us the blue comet trophy. And while working towards these, I reached the goal in Crisis City Act 2 without being hit by any cars or rocks. Unlocking luck both ways. And after a few hours of completing stages with no deaths and in a decent time, we finally get Big Bang for getting an S rank in every mission in the game. Right now you're probably thinking that the worst trophy's behind us, but there are two to come that are even worse. Before getting to one of those trophies, I decided to go for Super Sonic, which we get for completing a level as Super Sonic. But I'm a fucking idiot, and I thought you just had to use Super Sonic at some point during a level. And this is where I put a trophy. If I had one! So after finishing a stage as Super Sonic, we can add it to the collection. The next trophy is easily the worst trophy in the entire game and even made me consider giving up on this run altogether. In order to get the can't touch this trophy, we need to beat the final boss again, without being hit. The Time Eater has a couple of different attacks to hit you with, homing missiles, arm swipes, giant lasers and grab attacks. And since his whole gimmick is time, you know there's some kind of JoJo's reference here. You have to chase the Time Eater throughout the stage to hit it three times while making sure you don't run out of rings. I know collecting rings is something you normally do quite easily in Sonic games, but it's made all the more difficult here as Super Sonic controls like arse. The only bit of leeway that you get with this is being hit by flying debris doesn't disqualify you from this trophy. Thank God. I feel like some people will tell me that this trophy wasn't that difficult for them, and to that I say, good for you. I spent three hours doing it, but I wasn't alone. For the full three hours, I had Sonic's dickhead mates yelling at me every time an attack was coming. Halfway through my attempt, I had to turn off the game sound, so I just put on Better Call Saul in the background. My attempts consisted of collecting enough rings to last me the entire fight, hitting the time eater twice, getting hit, and restarting the level. But during these attempts, I had to keep running back to the shop to buy more lives because the game takes a life away every time you restart a stage. So that's fun. But just to add on to the massive fuck you that this trophy is, when I finally got it, I wasn't even fucking recording. So I have this millisecond clip of the trophy popping. But just to prove it, here it is on my trophy list. Fuck this game, next trophy. Since Generations released in the heyday of the PS3 and Xbox 360, it has to have online trophies, but luckily for me, I don't actually have to interact with another human being. The first online trophy, a 30 second test, is achieved for playing one stage in the 30 second test mode, where you have to see how far you can get in a stage in just 30 seconds. And I beat the run of my only other friend who plays this, so if you're watching this in the nicest way possible, eat shit. We get another trophy for trying out one stage in an online mode. We get joined the ranks by playing one stage in ranking attack. 
I guess these online trophies are just awarded for trying the mods once or twice. Hello, Bozo. Well, after two more hours of running through the same stages, we get Time Attacker for playing Ranking Attack on every stage in the game. With the online trophies done, it's time to move on to the collectibles. Within the game, there are nine worlds, each with two acts. And within each act, there are five red star rings to collect, which means we have a total of 90 red star rings to collect. I was able to grab a few on my first playthrough, but some of them are hidden in different routes of each act, and grabbing them takes some split-second moves to grab. And let me tell you, red rings are a real pain in the ass. <laughs> but enough of that, it's time to lock in. And by lock in, I mean follow a guide to reach each red star ring in the game while pausing my game every 10 seconds to see if I've missed something. In Green Hill Act 1, there's a hidden spring that leads to a red star ring. For grabbing that and making it to the goal, we get Jump for Joy. And while doing this, I finish the level without dropping any rings, getting the Ring King trophy. And just so I wouldn't have to play Green Hill Act 1 ever again, I decided to go for the Grease Lightning trophy, which you get for beating the stage in a minute or less. I've never done a proper speedrun before, and doing this trophy made me realise that I never will. I spent more time than I'm comfortable admitting getting this trophy, but once I got the route down, it was all about timing my jumps and spin dashes. I almost gave up on this, but I was finally able to get it after coming back the next day. But then, since I spent a ton of my points on lives for restarting stages, I had to grind Green Hill Act 1 over and over again to build them back up. While grabbing the red rings in Speed Highway, we get Byway or the Highway, for getting the ring on the shortcut route and reaching the goal. In Seaside Hill, we get Secret Sleuth for finding the red star ring in a hidden underwater room. Hello. How are you? I am under the water. For getting the red star ring at the top of the clock tower and rooftop run, we get the trophy a quick breather. And while getting the final red star rings in Planet Wisp, I got the ring hidden behind a rocket platform in Planet Wisp, getting the trophy color power. And after running through Planet Wisp one last time to get the last ring I missed, we finally get Red Ring Collector. Even though I've got all the red star rings, there's still one stage specific trophy to grab, Walk on Water. We get this in Chemical Plant Act 2 for completing the level without entering the water. And with the red star rings collected and all the stage specific trophies, I'm finally free. Wait, there was another stage, wasn't there? Earlier in the game, we got access to challenge acts. Each stage has 10 challenge acts, 5 modern, 5 classic. They include challenges like reaching the goal with just one ring, racing against a doppelganger to reach the end of the stage, and taking on Sonic's dumbass friends in races and challenges. There are 90 challenge acts to go, and I'm so fucking done with Sonic at this point. The first challenge act trophy we get is Halfway Point, for completing 45 challenge acts. And shortly following this, we get Bonds of Friendship, for completing all the acts featuring Sonic's friends. I hate these characters so much more now. I hope Vector gets turned into a pair of fucking boots after the music note challenge. Let it out. <laughs> Some of these challenge acts were actually awful. Like racing Amy on this stupid fucking thing, and the stage is just straight up not working sometimes. But after six hours of dragging my way through this shit, I was rewarded with the Mission Accomplished trophy for completing all of the challenge acts. And finally, after getting all the red rings, all the S ranks, and finishing all the challenge acts, I've collected all the songs and pieces of artwork in the game, and the game rewards us with hedgehogging it all up. Now it's time for the last trophy before the Platinum, and I've left the hardest one till the very end. Because to get the final trophy, Mad Skills, we need to collect all the equipable skills in the game. And how do we do this? Some may call this junk, me, I call them treasures. Yeah, we just buy them in the shop. Kinda anticlimactic, honestly. But this last trophy means that we finally get the Platinum. Overall, this took me about 21 hours and at least three playthroughs of every level in the game. Would I recommend doing this? If you like Sonic and hate your mental health, yeah. If you enjoyed this, please let me know. I really want to do more Platinum videos in the future and I already have a few games in mind. But I am never playing another Sonic game as long as I live.